ProDenta markets itself as a multi-strain probiotic that supposedly promotes dental health. Their claim is based on the idea that having good oral bacteria is important for healthy teeth. To illustrate this, they point out that teeth can remain well preserved for centuries in fossils, yet decay easily in our mouths. However, this claim is highly misleading. Fossils preserve teeth through mineralization processes that take place over long periods, essentially turning them into stone and protecting them from decay. It's not that the teeth are no longer exposed to bad bacteria or sugary foods. Rather, they're preserved because they've undergone a gradual transformation into a stone-like substance. They also claim that items such as toothpaste and mouthwash can damage the helpful bacteria in your mouth and back up their claims with a reference article. But is it true? Can toothpaste and mouthwash really harm your oral bacteria? Before we can address this question, we first need to address the bacteria in our mouths. From the article, a healthy mouth microbiome can indeed play a role in maintaining good dental hygiene. The article explains that not all bacteria in our mouths are harmful. It's the specific types of bacteria that matter. But this concept isn't groundbreaking. It's much like how a healthy gut microbiome contributes to an overall healthy gut, or healthy skin microbiome contributes to healthy skin. Many studies predating this article have emphasized the significance of the oral microbiome for dental and oral health. However, contrary to what ProDentum suggests, oral bacteria are just one small piece of the puzzle. Other factors such as proper oral hygiene, diet, genetics, and medical conditions also significantly influence oral health. If you have poor oral hygiene and eat sweets all day, it doesn't matter how many good probiotics you put into your mouth, you're still going to get cavities. But could mouthwash or toothpaste harm the good bacteria in your mouth and lead to problems? The article points out that using antiseptic mouthwashes to rid the mouth of bacteria might actually disturb the natural balance of healthy bacteria in the mouth. There is some truth to this. In fact, the notion that mouthwash might not be necessary and could even be harmful to the oral microbiome is not a new idea. There's already evidence suggesting that excessive use of chlorhexidine mouthwash can worsen oral bacteria levels over time. One reason the article gives is that regular use of chlorhexidine may increase the risk of bad bacteria becoming resistant to this antibiotic and evolving to become stronger. Most research already suggests you should avoid chlorhexidine mouthwash as a regular cavity prevention method because it may not work very well for this purpose. This is likely because mouthwash is unlikely to penetrate the biofilm layer sufficiently to destroy all the harmful bacteria. So there is merit to the idea that regular use of mouthwash might not be beneficial for dental health, and there's evidence suggesting it might be best to skip it. However, the article does not say that toothpaste does that. In fact, they make the distinction directly in the article that it is only mouthwashes, especially those containing chlorhexidine, that pose potential problems for the oral microbiome. There's absolutely no evidence suggesting toothpaste is harmful to the oral microbiome, as ProDentum is suggesting. So we already know that the balance of bacteria in our mouths can affect our oral health. But can taking probiotics make a difference? The article mentions one bacteria, Streptococcus dentisani, that could be beneficial. However, ProDentum doesn't contain this bacterium. So let's examine the probiotic strains in ProDentum to see if there's any scientific research supporting their effectiveness in promoting oral health in humans. ProDentum contains four different probiotic bacteria, a generic strain of Lactobacillus paracaceae, a generic strain of Lactobacillus rituri, a specific strain of Bifidobacterium lactis called BL04, and a generic strain of Streptococcus salivaris. Firstly, there's Lactobacillus paracaceae. Initial studies indicate that giving infants a specific strain known as LF19 from 4 to 13 months old does not decrease the risk of cavities in their baby or adult teeth. However, a different study administering another specific strain, SD1, to children once daily for 6 months did show a reduction in cavities. Yet another study involving adults taking a different specific strain, LPCG110, three times daily after meals found no decrease in gingival bleeding. 
So although all three studies looked at lactobacillus paracaceae, they produced varying outcomes with different strains. This underscores the importance of using specific strains of probiotics. Even if they belong to the same bacteria family, using a different strain may not yield the same level of effectiveness. The strains examined in these studies were LF19, SD1, and LPCG110. Prodentum doesn't specify which strain it contains, so it's likely a generic strain, which likely does not offer the same dental benefits as these researched strains. Lactobacillus retrui is another probiotic that has been also studied for various oral conditions, with mixed results. A meta-analysis of two studies that used Lactobacillus retrui in chewable tablets or lozenges for 4-8 to eight weeks found no improvement in gingivitis. Studies also indicate that giving infants a specific strain called ATCC55730 from birth until 12 months does not reduce dental plaque on their baby teeth by the age of 9 years. However, administering another strain of lactobacillus retrui to patients shortly after receiving a dental implant appeared to slightly reduce gum bleeding and improve other dental health factors. Yet there wasn't much change in the oral microbiome, suggesting that the improvement may not be due to the probiotic colonizing the mouth. The same strain was also given to sailors twice daily for 42 days, resulting in small improvements in dental health. Once again, the specific strain of Lactobacillus retrui matters, as different strains can produce different outcomes. The strains examined in these studies were ATCC55730, ATCCPTA5289, and DSM17938. Prodentum likely uses a generic strain again, which likely does not offer the same benefits as these researched strains. Bifidum bacterium lactis is another bacteria being researched for its impact on oral health, with mostly negative results unfortunately. Studies in infants reveal that giving a specific strain called BB12 for approximately 15 months does not lower cavity rates by age 4 compared to a placebo. Similarly, research involving adolescent boys aged 13 to 15 years found that taking two lozenges containing the same BB12 twice daily for 4 weeks did not reduce plaque compared to a placebo. Additionally, a small trial found that consuming a different strain called DN173010 for 4 weeks does not prevent gum inflammation or plaque compared to a placebo. However, after a 5 day period without brushing, this strain did show a small reduction in both gum inflammation and plaque formation. The specific strains examined in these studies were BB12 and DN173010, neither of which matches the one in Prodentum. There's no evidence that Prodentum strain of Bifidobacterium lactis, which is BLO4, is beneficial for dental health. Finally, let's look at Streptococcus salivaris. In a clinical study, children who consumed a specific strain called M18 experienced a small reduction in plaque scores. Similarly, in a separate study, adults who took another strain known as K12 also saw a decrease in plaque buildup after 6 weeks. Yet another study combining both strains of Streptococcus salivaris found that adults who took this combination had a lower risk of cavities. Moreover, K12 was found to alleviate halitosis or bad breath, but only when the tongue coating was removed before using the lozenge. The strains examined in these studies were M18 and K12, both of which are sold under the proprietary name BLIS. Again, Prodentum doesn't specify the strain it uses on the bottle or website. Overall, Prodentum does use a number of probiotics which have been researched for dental health. However, it appears that Prodentum uses mostly generic strains of these probiotics. As we've learned from the research, the specific strain of probiotic matters significantly in terms of the effectiveness for dental health. Using a different strain can result in vastly different outcomes. Since Prodentum doesn't specify or contain any of the specifically researched strains, I'm not sure it provides any of the researched benefits. More likely than not, these generic strains in Prodentum offer minimal to no benefits for oral health compared to their well-researched counterparts. Therefore, I think it's unlikely that Prodentum is effective for promoting oral health. If I want to achieve what Prodentum claims to do effectively, I'd search for probiotics with the specific strains that have been researched and shown benefits. Among the strains we've examined, Streptococcus salivaris M8 
18 and K12, marketed under the name BLIS, seem to be the easiest to get and have the most consistent evidence of improving overall dental health. However, even then, the overall benefits were marginal and 100% does not replace proper toothbrushing and good oral hygiene. While ProDentum sells for approximately $70 per month, oral probiotics containing Streptococcus salivaris K12 or M18 typically range from $10 to $20 a month. Rating ProDentum by effectiveness for improving dental health, I'm giving it a D. While the types of probiotics they use have been researched for oral health before, it's unlikely that the generic and unlisted strains they use will be helpful. Rating it by cost, I'm giving it a D. You can get far more effective strains for much cheaper. Rating it for safety, I'm giving it a B. These probiotic strains appear to be relatively safe to use. Overall rating, I'm giving it a D. I would not recommend it at all. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date and share this video with someone you know who can use the info.